Okay, so let's talk about resource controller. And when we created our model under controllers folder, this post controller was created for us. Now a resource controller is pretty much like any other controller. The difference is that all the methods that we would need for a resource or a model is already created for us. So let's go through these very quickly and see what they are. We have the index method, which is used for listing the resource. In this case, for us is a post or a blog post. So we would use this function, render our home page where we have all the posts. We have the create method, which is used for rendering the form that the user would use for creating a post. Then we would have the store method that would be used to save the post in database. Now you notice in this store method, we have this store post request instead of the request itself. This is basically another class generated by that A flag from the make model command. And we don't actually need this. Later on, we would delete this and we would use the plain request class. But when we get to it, I will explain where it is coming from. Then we have the show method, which is used for rendering or showing the individual post and the post class and an instance of it is already added here for us as a parameter. And this is because of the route model binding. We want to have different routes for a specific resource or a post. So with route model binding, we don't have to say which property are we looking for. So we just have to pass the model itself. And we will talk about this more when we get to it. Then we have the edit method which is used to render a form for updating a post and the update method which is used for actually updating the post and saving it into database again we have this update post request instead of the request itself and also we have the post instance because we would be updating one individual post and lastly we have the destroy method which is used for deleting a resource or a blog post. So this is our controller. Now we need to actually have routes attached to all of these methods. If we go to our web.php where our routes are sitting, we created our routes manually. So we said, for example, we want to have a get method and go to dashboard and this method in the dashboard controller will handle it. And the same thing for logout and register and so on. So we want to have similar routes for all of these methods. Now, we don't have to create these one by one. Since we are using a resource controller, creating or adding the routes is actually very easy. First, let's go to the terminal and run PHP Artisan route list. So this will just list the available routes in our app. So in this list, we get the HTTP method in the first column, then we have the URI, then we have the name of the route, if there is a name, and then the controller, and the function that is handling that route. So again, if it is available, it's going to show. If not, like this one, it is just going to show the name. So for example, we have these two login routes that we created. The first one is the get method, and we didn't actually use a controller. We are using a view, right? So only the name is shown here. But for the post method, we have a login method in the auth controller. So we have 11 routes. Now we want to add our post route. So back to the web.php, we have a resource method on the route class. So this resource method takes a name, let's call it posts, and as a second argument, the resource controller. So we can pass our post controller class here, and that's all we have to do. Now, just by doing this, if we check out our routes again, you can see we have 18 routes and all these posts routes have been added automatically for us. And if we inspect actually these routes, you notice each route corresponds to the proper method in our post controller. So the index page, which is a get method, goes to the index method, the store method, which is using the post HTTP method and we have put or patch and delete and so on. So again, we have the HTTP method, then we have the URI, the name of the route and the handler function. So the name we used here is used for the name of the routes and also URI. Now you notice these four routes have this post in curly brackets. So this is because we want to have a dynamic URI for these routes. For example, when we go to an individual post, we want to have forward slash posts, forward slash two, three, or the ID of the post. If you want to delete it, it's gonna be the same. But again, instead of passing down the ID, we can use the name of the class or the resource and Laravel would automatically resolve that for us. All right, so our routes and controller is in place. And next, we want to see how we can use a factory to generate some dummy data. Before we go to the next video, we have this view route, which is rendering the post index, basically our homepage right here. We want to actually use this index view for our 
home page of the posts so basically this route so when we go to forward slash posts we want to see this page so let's open that view let's actually get rid of all of these texts and we just want to add some title here and say latest posts so remember in our controller the index method is used for listing the resource in this case blog posts so we want to use this method to render this index view so we already know how to do this we just want to return a view and pass that index page so our home page is still the same but also now if we go to forward slash posts we also get the same thing so we don't want to have two of this basically we want to redirect the users to forward slash posts as our home page whenever they go to the forward slash so we can get rid of this view route and use the route class again and then use the redirect method so we want to pass the forward slash as the uri as the first argument and the destination is going to be posts so the home page for our resource controller so before we actually test this out let's go to the layout file because we have this route that is looking for the home page so that doesn't exist anymore instead of home we can pass posts.index and these names are coming from our resource controller and the routes that was created by Laravel so these are the names that we can use in our app so back to our website if I go to forward slash we are automatically redirected to forward slash posts